What's up, folks? <laughs> <laughs> Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Marketing for Coaches. It's me, Kevin. It's a me, Mario. It's a me, Mario. Mario. I'm kidding. It's a me, Kevin. It's Michael. <laughs> I'll drop. I'll drop that's the phone. Cultural, down. That's cultural appropriation. <laughs> hey, when when we're recording this, a Super Mario Brothers movie has recently come out to great fanfare and nine figure box office numbers. So, congratulations. Kevin? Your past has returned. <laughs> Congratulations, and I'm sorry. Nostalgia is everywhere. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. I'm actually here to share with Michael and to share with all of you um, a little, I was going to say anecdote. It's kind of more of a parable about, and this is kind of how I framed it to myself, because when I first read this, and this is kind of just a little bit of inside baseball, inside the marketer studio, so to speak, um, from the perspective of someone running an ad campaign. And my first thought when I read this little story, I was like, ooh, yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But here's why specifically. This is a specific story about the way things go um, when you're advertising on Facebook, which there is a lot too. But basically, someone had a really well-performing campaign. Their uh, cost per lead was going down on a regular basis. So basically, they were spending less to get more ideal. It's a, an ad manager's dream, essentially. And then he just realized he wanted to change some things. He wanted to make a couple of really tiny tweaks to like the form on the landing page is how information was being collected. Super small changes. So he went ahead and did it, tweaked it, and sent the changes through. And he noticed very quickly that his cost per lead, the amount of spend that was required to get the same amount of results, jumped up by three or four times. It was almost 4x what it was just be right before the changes. And he panicked, like oh, any responsible ad manager would. All of a sudden, you're spending more to get less results. It's like, no, 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 no. I gotta let's go back. Let's go back. So he reverted the form back to its original, its original form, and kind of like, yeah, you know, put everything back the way it was. And things went up again. The cost per lead went up again. So all of a sudden, he was spending almost like 15 times the amount per lead than he was before this back and forth. And what he realized very quickly is that this was something very specific to how Facebook manages ads. Um, something called the learning phase, which we won't get into details here because it's just, like, like I said, a little inside baseball. But long story short, the algorithm punished those small changes because it basically started over again in the way that it was serving those ads and the way that it was acquiring those ads and delivering them to, to users. Um, and essentially just, just trying to make those small changes completely changed the the value prop of of the advertising funnel so it was working very effectively until he tweaked it and then it started working very very poorly now over time it would it would prove to go back to normal but the lesson i the lesson i immediately took from this was man should have left well enough alone <laughs> and that's that's something that we think about i mean we think about we talk about with our um, amongst the team with our clients all the time is like is this the right thing to do should we make this change? Should we hold the course? Is this working very well and we should stay with it? How can we add to it in a way that understands what might happen if we do change something? If we change it, will it change it for the better? How do we, how, and how we discover these things, how we know the way Google's algorithm runs and whether or not making a change will actually get rewarded and all of a sudden start serving your content, your website, and everything much, up, up much higher on certain search results, really like in the weed stuff like that, that quite frankly, Michael and I will nerd out about on a regular basis. But I think I've talked <laughs> for long enough about this. I got really excited about this. And so I was like, I wanna talk about it on the show with Michael. Um, so uh, hopefully my enthusiasm is coming through, but Michael, what do you think about this? Well, first of all, this little little parable of the, of the, of the ad manager tweaker. Um, and what do you think of how, about how that applies to the way Boxer approaches marketing and the way that our clients can, can feel about such an approach. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, um, you know, I've been, I've been doing, you know, digital ads for about almost 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, when do you leave good? When do you leave good enough alone? <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. That's the question, right? I and mean, that's the question you're, you're posing to yourself when you're looking in the mirror and you're, and you're facing something like, like this parable that you're talking about. Um, and, and the, the answer is, is the, the old attorney's answer is the old lawyer's answer. It depends. <laughs> it's just, you, you just right. don't know. 
Um, it, it completely depends. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of variables that go into it. Um, and there's no one right answer for any of it. There's just not. Um, it's always going to be a little bit of a gamble. Um, and and you, what you're, you you want to do is is play the odds in these situations. And, <laughs> you know, it, this reminds me, this parable that you're talking about, honestly, man, this the, we're recording this on a Monday, April 24th. This happened yesterday. Mm-hmm. Facebook globally, um, people's ad campaigns, their, their CPLs, their cost per leads just started shooting up through the roof. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but you know, most, most people that I know that are casually, uh, running Facebook ads for their coaching business, for their solopreneur business, as it were, um, are not, uh, eagerly sitting at the computer on a Sunday <laughs> watching watching Facebook to make sure that their costs are not quadrupling, uh, which is what happened yesterday in some cases, again, globally. Mm-hmm. Um, Facebook came out with an apology uh, message uh, today. The problem's been solved. Again, this is, this is Monday now. Um, and, and it was a global problem that all happened because of automation within the algorithm. So the question, you know, again, the, the question is, when do you leave well enough alone? I think the question beyond that is who is watching the algorithm on your behalf, right? Mm-hmm. Cause you don't want to do that. Mm-mm. That's time consuming. It's a pain in the butt. It's not particularly fun <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless you're really into it. <laughs> yeah. It's not what you signed up for when you started your business. You have you have bigger fish to fry. You have other people to serve. <laughs> yeah. And and honestly, man, sometimes making small changes can have a huge positive effect. You know, mm-hmm. I, I've seen it before where you change a, a button from blue to green, right? And you're almost doubling ROI on that. Mm-hmm. Doesn't happen often. Not no, gonna it does happen. Not gonna not gonna lie about that. Doesn't happen often. <laughs> I've seen it once. Um, but it, I've seen it happen. Um, and you know, there, there is a time marketing is just a very fancy word for testing. Yeah. I think is, is kind of what it comes down to. And so you want to test and you want to test those kind of things and you want to make changes and you want to do it in a measured scientific way with understanding of what you're getting into. You want to play the odds and you want to be aware of the algorithm and, and what, you know, you want to know what can happen. So that's kind of my take on that. Yeah. And it really it's, and I, I find this to be true so often and it's partially because of who we work with and how long we've been working with them, but it's a lot like coaching where you have proven process, you have system, you have steps in place, you have these things you want your clients to go through and your real value is in your active guidance, your ability to know what that person's individual needs are and to be able to make adjustments to the process in service of what their desired goals are. And that's like that's a lot of the way, that's very similar to the way that we approach marketing is that we have our proven processes, we have our systems, we run them, we know that they work and we tweak them to serve the ultimate larger goals of our individual clients. And we stay abreast of changes in algorithms, whether it's ad algorithms or SEO algorithms or whatever it might happen to be so that we know the intelligent changes to make on behalf of our clients. That last part, Kevin, is hugely, hugely important. Um, So besides all of the work that we've done in the past, right, we've already optimized all these processes. We know what we're doing. We've been doing this for a while. We also keep abreast of the new stuff that's coming down the pipe because new stuff is constantly coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) This stuff always changes from, from Google's search algorithm, if you're doing SEO, to LinkedIn's uh, LinkedIn's algorithm on the LinkedIn feed, right? If you want to get your content ranked well enough on LinkedIn that people are able to see it so that they can like it, so that they can comment on it, so that they can click over to your profile, so that they can reach out to you and hire you. If you want to do all that, you have to understand, you don't have to, I mean, you, you people get lucky and, and score on social media all the time. And it helps <laughs> to 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 know and understand how all that stuff works or to have yeah. someone in your corner that does. 
Mm -hmm. Having a post be valuable on a platform like TikTok looks a lot different than having a post be valuable on LinkedIn. Those algorithms reward different kinds of content differently. And it's important to, it's important to understand that there is a difference, but you probably don't want to know specifically what those differences are. You want someone on your team who does. <laughs> you want someone who you trust to know that. And the same can be said for YouTube, right? Because YouTube has YouTube oh, shorts yeah. now. And the same can be said for Instagram and the same can be said for Facebook. Um, and, and God knows, you know, I mean, it's, we're, again, we're recording this <laughs> April 24th on a Monday. Dude, who knows in the next, you know, seven days, what new social media platform is going to come out and take over the world. It might not be TikTok <laughs> because there's certain things happening at high levels in the government. Who knows? Yeah. Um, anything could happen, honestly. So it's like it's like it's like the universe. There's like a new star being born every second. And there's just a new possible social media platform being born every second that might take over the world. Or it might just disappear in a puff <clears throat> like a fart in the wind. <laughs> but it pays, to, it pays to have your ear to the ear to the ground and to kind of see what's coming and what might be worth jumping on and what might be worth jumping away from. It's all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, it gets us up out of bed during the day and gets us really like nerdily excited about stuff. But maybe you don't want to be, you know, the person who's keeping abreast and reading the trades and, you know, you're, you know, yeah. neck deep in newsletters and you're like hitting your hitting your private communities to learn all this stuff. We love it. And it's important that you know about it. Yeah. Just put that out there. Rumble, Rumble, <laughs> Rumble is one that we're kind of keeping an eye on at, at, at Boxer. That's uh, coming up um, yeah. as it started out, I think, as almost like a one of those weird like right wing alternatives to YouTube, like so with like no censorship kind of a thing. Um, but it has gained it has gained legitimate traction. I, mm -hmm. I feel like last I want to say maybe two months, give or take. Um, so we're kind of keeping an eye on that one. Um, I don't know that it's ever going to be quite as big as YouTube, but it, it's it's certainly gained legitimate traction, which is kind of surprised me. Had you heard of TikTok five years ago? Did it exist in any meaningful way in this area of the world four years ago? It, bring it around now, Kevin. Bring it around now. Bring it around now. I, well, I think we've already come back around, and I'm already I'm 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 doing that thing that I so often do for the podcast is I get into a really good vein of conversation, and I'm really like I want to ask follow up questions to keep it going, and I look up at the Zoom clock and I get embarrassed as a host. I'm not going to say I failed you, but I have gone a little long in the tooth, so I'm going to pull this out now. But we're going to be back here again. We're going to be back here again next week. We're going to be back here again all the time. You're not going to be able to get rid of us, especially if you like and subscribe, which you should. We won't bother you. And we're share. Gonna, and share. We're going to bring you good stuff. Comment if you want to add to the conversation. We, I mean, clearly, we love talking about this kind of stuff. So if you're willing to brave <laughs> the, the, the nerd out from Kevin and Michael, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Kevin at Boxer Agency. Michael at Boxer Agency. Real easy to get us via email. And yeah, you can find us on all the socials. We'll have links to all the things down in the show notes. We're easy to find. So I think we'll talk to you again very soon. We'll talk to you again very soon.